Bhagwan often said, where there is faith, there is no fate. Today we shall share one or two incidents where this statement expresses its truth in action. If we have, if we have faith in our Bhagwan's grace, Bhagwan's integrity, that He would come to our rescue in the times of our difficulty. It shall be so. Bhagwan from Thiruvannamale often used to go to Thirukovilur. Tapovanam, where Sri Yananandagiri Swamiji was residing. And there all others would go inside and eat in the ashram of Tapovanam. But Yogiji would go to a house, a particular house where the mother was very kind to him, would always offer food, would invite him with great love and devotion. And he would sit there, there is a particular stone, he would sit there on the stone and eat the food from the hand of the mother. Even today, in that house, one could see the stone where Bhagwan used to sit and take food. That mother has two sons. If people remember a particular incident where one Raman and his brother Vishwanathan, so much, they, they were so hungry and Bhagwan took idlis instead of giving them. And how they finally found their tummies full without eating. Now that Vishwanathan, the same Vishwanathan, it's a place called Agaram. Now he was married. His daughter at one particular time had chicken pox and so people in such houses would not go out. That particular day Vishwanathji had to go out for something. When he came back, his daughter said, Father, I, have, I had a dream. Thiruvannamala Yogiji came in my dream and said, he wanted to see you immediately. He wanted you to go and see him immediately. So Vishwanathji hastened to reach Bhagwan at Sanadhi Street House. When he arrived, Bhagwan was sitting right on the doorstep and there were people around him. It looked as though Bhagwan was waiting for him to come. As soon as he arrived, he called Vishwanathji and said, Vishwanathji, this beggar doesn't want you to go to Rishikesh now. Vishwanathji almost did a somersault. He was totally taken aback because he never revealed any details of his going to Rishikesh to Swami. Though he had made all arrangements 
two days after, two or three days after, he was going to go by Tamil Nadu Express. to Delhi and then from there to Rishikesh. He never revealed it, but here Swami came in his daughter's dream, asked him to come, and without his telling anything, without his volunteering any information, here Swami was saying, the first thing that he spoke was, this beggar doesn't want you to go to Rishikesh. Immediately Vishwanathji prostrated and set out to cancel his ticket. He simply obeyed unquestioningly. On the day he was to go by Tamil Nadu Express, Tamil Nadu Express met with a terrible accident. There were people who lost their lives people who were wounded, people who lost their wealth, whatever luggage they had taken, were all lost. Then Vishwanathji understood why Swami made him cancel his trip to Rishikesh. Now if you look at this incident, of course after that Vishwanathji once again came to Swami and prostrated before Him with profuse thanks. Uh, all that Swami said, My Father blesses Vishwanathji. It's all my Father's grace, Vishwanathji. This beggar knows nothing. My Father blesses you. When we look at this incident closely, we understand Tamil Nadu Express did go that day and it met with an accident. The Tamil Nadu Express it, it by fate, it could not be avoided. The accident could not be avoided. He did not stop Tamil Nadu Express itself. He stopped only Vishwanathji. He did not stop other people losing their lives or getting wounded. He saved only Vishwanathji. So this shows that this great Mahatmas will not interfere with the divine plan, the preordained plan that runs the whole cosmos. But if there is a devotee with deep faith in their guru or God, then there will be divine intervention. And the divine would do the, would do the needful. There's another incident as interesting, but after Bhagwan's Mahasamadhi. There's a girl by name Aishwarya in Coimbatore. Of course, then she was studying in a college. And she had she developed great faith in Bhagwan, devotion to him, because her uncle always talked about Bhagwan and how His grace. One day when she had visited the ashram, she sang a beautiful song, and after that she was asked to do the arati to Bhagwan. After the arati was over, in the arati, the first thing is they would light the incense sticks and wave them before Bhagwan. After one round of waving, they will keep it there, near Bhagwan. there's a stand, incense stand, and they would keep it there. After the arati was over, everybody left Pradhan Mandir for lunch. They all went to 
dining hall. A little later, I saw some smoke coming next to Bhagwan. Immediately I rushed. And I saw that the incense sticks that she had lighted and waved before Bhagwan, two or three of them had fallen down from the incense stand upon the tray there, and in the tray was kept a matchbox with lots of matchsticks. Somehow the matchbox was a little open, and one of the matchsticks caught fire, and then the whole matchbox was burning, and that happened to be a plastic tray, so the tray also caught the fire and it was melting, so there was smoke and smell. In fact, quite a bit was gone already by the time I found out and rushed there. And then, of course, after that we removed all those matchsticks. The entire matchbox was burnt out and a little of the tray also. So by the time those people came back after their lunch, and then I told them what happened. And naturally they were greatly agitated. They said, oh, it's a very bad woman, something terrible is going to happen to us. Oh, what should we do? Both the uncle and the niece were very much agitated. I had seen in my experience here in the ashram, especially in Pradhan Mandir, if any such thing should happen in front of Bhagwan, it's not an ill omen as one would assume, misconstrue. It is sometimes Bhagwan would uh, express it, that is, he would take away the bad karma in some way or, other, or the other, with the result the devotee will be saved from this kind of devastation. So it looked to me that day that Bhagwan was doing that, that the girl was in danger, in great danger, something was really going to happen to her by fate. But because of her devotion, because of her faith in Bhagwan, Bhagwan had removed that bad karma which would be the cause for this kind of fate. So I told her, I pacified her, I told her, don't worry. In fact, whatever is meant to happen to you has been taken away by Bhagwan, and that you have been freed from this particular karma, from this particular danger. So don't worry, just keep chanting, go home. There is nothing to worry about. True to that, what happened, after a little while her college mates had planned a tour from Coimbatore to Delhi. After their tour, they were going to return from Delhi back to Kobe. They were going to start on a Monday. but. Something made this Aishwarya tell her, teachers, since the work was over, we could start on Saturday itself, some context. So they listened to her and they thought it was a good idea and they started on Saturday itself instead of Monday. And they reached Coimbatore safely. But the train they were going to come originally, the Monday train, on the way, halfway through, met with an accident, a fire accident. And the very same cabins they had booked, they were caught in fire and there was damage to lives and luggages. And then she understood that Bhagwan had saved her from a certain danger. 
not only her but to her classmates and the teachers. What grace! Now how did this happen? Because that day the Monday train was coming on its way, its schedule was kept up and it did meet with an accident and there was damage to other people and to the train, but she alone was saved, she with a group of people. Because there was faith, so she escaped from fate. So in both the incidents we see the truth of the statement Bhagwan made often, where there is faith, there is no fate.